Good evening, I'm Abhude Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Path being made using ropes for trekking world's highest peak, Mount Everest. Trekking to start in a few days. Hustle and bustle of tourists towards the main path to Everest. CTVT prepares to operate educational programs for nursing by partnering with provincial hospitals. Classes to start in the upcoming session if the government provides permission. The death toll in the Gaza Strip surpasses 32,000 while Israel presses forward with plans to advance on the southern Gaza city of Rafah despite pushback from the U.S. And help Nepal defeat Thrivan Army three sets to two to lift the men's NBA volleyball title. Everest Volleyball Club outclasses defending champions Nepal police three sets to one to win the women's title. Thousands of mountaineers visit Nepal every year to scale the high Himalayan peaks. These mountaineers' favorite choice of peaks are Mount Everest, Annapurna, Lhotse, Makalu, Choyu, Gyeongchung, among others. 18 teams have been granted permission so far to scale the Himalayan peaks of Nepal for this season, and the works to make a pathway to Mount Everest has already started. More in this report. The ongoing spring season is appropriate for trekking the Himalayan mountains. Mountaineers are busy taking permission from the Department of Tourism to scale the high peaks. Mountaineers have to pay royalties to the Nepal government to trek the Himalayan mountains. The highest royalty is for scaling Mount Everest, which is 11,000 US dollars. So far, 18 teams have received permission from the Department of Tourism. Revenue of 2.6 million rupees has been collected from them. If the weather permits, the trekking season will start in a few days. A specialist team has already begun making path up to Mount Everest. The team started to construct the path on 14th of March after holding prayers. The Sherpa community worshipped the Himalayan mountains before starting the trek. A team has already constructed a path up to the base camp and the team will make a path up to second camp in a few days. The Sagarmatha Pollution Control Committee, which is located in Namche, the gateway to Mount Everest, partners with the Department of Tourism every year to construct a path up to the second camp. The Sagarmatha Pollution Committee deploys skilled workers a month before the trekking season starts. The eight-member team, under the leadership of Ansarki Sherpa, has been given the responsibility to construct the path this time around. After the team constructs the path up to the second camp, Seven Summit Trek will install ropes up to the summit of Mount Everest. After the path is made using ropes and ladders, the trekking guides will start to take the mountaineers towards the peak. And once the end of the trekking campaign, the same team has the responsibility to clear the ropes, ladders and other materials. The ropes used in the construction of the pathway is brought from the United States of America, Canada and South Korea. Around 5,500 meters of the rope has been used for the path from the base camp to the second camp. The months of March and April, which are considered the second season for tourism, is when Nepal sees a substantial number of international visitors come to Nepal for many purposes. This includes mountain expedition, trekking, pilgrimage trips, or just to be in the nature. We have a report on how visitors are going about different tourism destinations in Nepal during this time. International tourists visit Nepal during the month of March and April to enjoy the scenic beauty of the mountains. Many also come to trek along the popular destinations in Annapurna and Manaslu conservation area. At present, the tourism capital of the country, Pokhara, is full of life, thanks to tourists that have come for mountain expedition and trekking purposes. The restaurants are fantastic. The people have been so lovely. Uh, we we're planning on going trekking, very, very excited to see all of the Himalayas and the mountains. Uh, it's like a dream for us from where we come from to come here. Uh, so really, really happy to France, be European Mulgi Manchurs and France, Germany, Lagat, uh, Netherlands, Manchur, Terrace, and British Manchur, and so to Isama, Padadadu Gorno, Kulagi, Matmuno, Somai, and Manin, so this was here. I'm Jerthi, Malar, and Sur, and you are currently all this in Pokhama, British Ruts, and Manchur, and Ramrisa. Based on government data, 191,558 visitors arrived in Nepal last year to trek in the Annapurna region. In Lamjung, which is also in the Gandaki province, visitors have gathered after trekking 
through the Annapurna and Manang's beautiful Tilijo Lake. This is a nice country where to come and uh, have a nice atmosphere and meet people, talk and, and enjoy. Elsewhere in the hilly district of Taplujung, that has a population of 120,000, local businesses have been delighted with the arrival of three times the usual visitors. September, October, November, spring season, April The excitement and footfall is no different in Kaptar that connects Bajhang, Bajura, Doti and Acham districts. And also in Dolakha that includes Rolwaling Valley, Chorolpa Lake and Tasi Lapsa Pass to the Everest. Dosro Patago, yeah, on the Hirte, Jatipani, Takaisan, Tintasan, Tensansan, Obisco Cam, Rusan, Sobi Birsherat, Frey, Sorgo Fogazas on Wobunza. Yeah, they Sundaratam, Tamaru, Madego Yota to Grau, Jostalaxa, Mansia Ruli, Banegarego, Sorgo Goyota, a Tukra Josari Bunsan, to Chikayo Jostalaxa. Most of the visitors to Nepal are from India, China, US, and the UK. Based on the Nepal Tourism Board, 1,015,000 tourists came to Nepal in the year 2023, which shows that Nepal's tourism sector has picked the pace of the pre-pandemic levels. In, the, in our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces which trekking destination do they want to go to and why. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Dadingo Ganga Jamuna se Kathmandu Rajdhani dekhi baata nazik ko route baaye kule ek dumi trekking ko lagi upaykta sthano. Ruby Valley atyante ek dum bhagoli sundar tale Baripur bhago thauncha ab atya jai ab ma patak patak janaale mala ananda thauncha. Bhutsur ra khotang na avsit mundam trail se padyatra ko lagi ek dumi. आध्यात्मिक <laughs> The Council for Technical Education and Vocational Training, CTEVT, is making preparations to operate educational programs for nursing by partnering with provincial hospitals. CTEVT's five dozen nursing colleges were closed with the implementation of the Medical Education Act as they did not have their own hospitals. Now CTVT has moved forward the process to operate nursing education programs by partnering with provincial hospitals as an alternative. The CTVT has corresponded with the, the health ministry and the education ministry to run partnership programs with provincial hospitals as proposed by the ministries. If the government provides permission, CTVT is making preparations to start the nursing program from the upcoming session. According to the Medical Education Act, to run a nursing college, it must have its own hospital with at least 100 bed capacity. Due to this provision, many educational institutions providing certificate level nursing education had to be closed. The capacity for student admission in nursing education was around 4,000 five years ago. This has now dropped to 2,000. The CTVT says the process to operate nursing programs by partnering with provincial hospitals has been moved forward, keeping in mind the demand of nurses and the demand of students. It's now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked you, political parties have identified the electoral system as the cause of political instability. What is your opinion? 40% voted for A, correct analysis, 45% for B, politicians are the reason, and 15% for C, weak laws are the cause. And here's today's question. What should be the top priority of the foreign minister who is leaving for a visit to China? Your options are A, increase grant, B, bring in investment, and C, facilitate transit points. 
The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update. The death toll in the Gaza Strip has surpassed 32,000 as announced by the Hamas-run health ministry in the Palestinian enclave while Israel presses forward with plans to advance on the southern Gaza city of Rafah despite pushback from the United States. At least 32,070 Palestinians have been killed and 74,298 have been injured in the battered enclave since October 7, 2023. Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made his eighth visit to Israel since the outbreak of the Palestine-Israel conflict. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was quoted by the country's government press office as stating that he met with Blinken and told him that, the, that he appreciated the fact that for more than five months, the two countries have been standing together in the war against Hamas. He added that Israel recognizes the need to evacuate the civilian population from the combat zones and is working to this end, according to the statement, but emphasized that there is no way to defeat Hamas without entering Rafah and eliminating the remnant of the battalions there. Thousands of displaced Palestinians have been forced into Rafah, a city on the region's southern border with Egypt, following months of Israeli attacks on the north and south of Gaza. Blinken has pleaded with Netanyahu not to invade the city without a plan in place to protect civilians. Netanyahu stressed that Israel will press forward with the siege regardless of the American position. Eight parcels were airdropped over Gaza today as Israel threatened to launch a major military operation in the southern city of Rafah, just across the border with Egypt, despite international appeals against it. As hopes for a truce during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan have faded and the humanitarian situation in Gaza has become more desperate, the United States and other countries have sought to use airdrops and ships to deliver more relief. But humanitarian agencies say that only about one-fifth of the required amount of supplies has been entering Gaza and that the only way to meet needs in the coastal enclave is to rapidly accelerate deliveries by road. Sports News. Help Nepal Sports Club defeated Tribun Army Club three sets to two to lift the men's NBA Volleyball Championship title. In the final played at the covered hall of the National Sports Council in the capital's Tripurishar today, Help Nepal Sports Club defeated Tribun Army Club in a thrilling five-setter 20-25, 27-25, 23-25, 25-22, 25-20. Along with the title, Help Nepal Sports Club bagged 500,000 rupees in prize money. Runners-up Trivan Army had to satisfy with 200,000 rupees. In the match for the third place held today, Nepal Police Club defeated Gandaki Province in straight sets 25-15, 25-20, 29-27. Help Nepal's Pakistani spiker Fakhar Uddin was declared the player of the tournament towards the men's side and bagged 40,000 rupees in prize money. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Usman Faryad Ali won the Best Spiker Award, while Nepal Police Club's M. Rana was handed the Best Center Award. Meanwhile, Everest Volleyball Club outclassed defending champions Nepal Police Club three sets to one to lift the Women's NBA Volleyball Championship title. In the title decider played at the covered hall in Tripurishar today, Everest Volleyball Club defeated Nepal Police Club 19-25, 25-22, 25-18, 25-19 to become champions for the first time. Along with the title, Everest Volleyball Club bagged 500,000 rupees in prize money. Runners-up Nepal Police Club had to settle for 100,000 rupees. Everest Volleyball Club's Indian spiker KP Anushri won the player of the tournament towards the women's side and bagged a cash prize of 40,000 rupees. Likewise, Usa Bhandari was declared the best striker towards the women's side, while Aruna Shahi was the best setter. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.